Hello everyone, welcome back to the Revival and today's match which is Birmingham City versus Newcastle United in the FA Cup. You can see we've made a little bit of a rotational decision on a couple of players. Uh, it's not been enforced, it's just a case of wanting to give some players some playing time. So at centre-back, Fazio partners to Debo, Henricks and Willems retaining their places at full-back. Hayden... I mean, we've got three defensive midfielders and none of them are in great form. So I've decided that Hayden is going to keep his place. If we absolutely have to make a change, Tadebo is capable of playing in defensive midfield. So he could step into midfield with either Aya or Machia coming on to replace him there. Uh, in attacking midfield, I'm sticking with Nkunku and Shelby because it's a partnership that we've not actually used for a couple of games now. So I just want to get that familiarity building back up. And up front, we're going with Frank Ribery, who uh, my staff did suggest we should rotate into the team. Along with Timo Werner and Alan St. Maximan. So plenty of pace up front for the Birmingham defenders to contend with. We'll be playing in our very, very attractive tangerine coloured kit today. That's it, a bunch of oranges running around the park. I do like that kit a lot, actually. Like, Newcastle have got such an iconic uh, first team, first choice kit. And it's so rare that they play a team where they have to play in anything other than the black and white stripes. But that orange kit is really nice. not so sure about the Birmingham kit. Apologies to any Birmingham fans out there. I just think you've had much, much nicer shirts than that. Right, so here we go. Now, Newcastle United in this game as well as in real life. No strangers to being upset by teams below them. And that's not a, uh, a disparaging uh, comment on the uh, state of Birmingham it is just the case that in this game they are in the championship and we are Premier League so you know we should in theory be beating this team now what's happened there is that offside Ribery may have been caught offside no interesting a foul has been given that is the softest free kick that you will see today I think that's absolutely unbelievable who's refereeing this game Mike Dean Okay, a nice little floated ball into the box, up to head it, and it just goes over the crossbar. The players knew exactly what we wanted to do, but they couldn't quite deliver. He's going to try with another floated delivery. Comes out to Hayden, who keeps hold of the ball. He's looking for someone to take it off of him. Knocks it over to Henricks. Shelby. Back into Henricks. Oh, ho -ho. close. He's had a taste for goal in recent games, Henricks. And you can see him busting the lung trying to get there. And it's just wide of the post. He's never going to be a double figures goal scorer. But you've got to admire his ability and his hunger for getting on goal. And sh I don't know what that was, Shelby. I tried to auto-cancel, but it wasn't happening by that point. He'd already taken what is quite possibly the most embarrassing bicycle kick uh, that uh, I can think of. Right, header won by Birmingham, and it's lobbed forwards. Here's Nkunku on the left-hand side. He's got Ribery ahead of him, and he does use him. Uses a trick to jink past the defender. Can he get a cross in? He can. Oh, bicycle kick. Oh, my word. It's off the crossbar. And that would have been a spectacular opening goal for Alan St. Maximan, but he couldn't quite get it on target. Here's a chance for Nkunku. Oh, my word. Goalkeeper, absolute hero. Three tremendous saves from the Birmingham goalkeeper. I thought that that was an absolute dead cert for Christopher and Kunku. In the, in the end, it was two fantastic saves from the goalkeeper, not taking anything away from him. 
But my word, Nkunku should have buried that one. Now Birmingham with the ball coming out from the corner. They've got a chance to break, except that Hayden does a fantastic job of winning the ball back. Here's Ribery. He can't quite get past his man, unfortunately. That's a very strange pass from Birmingham. Good strong header. Nice passing work by Newcastle and it's in. There we go, the opening goal of the game. Timo Werner, it's not the most accurate header of his career, but it will certainly count exactly the same as any of those. Lovely passing play in the build-up. All good one-touch passes. Willems takes the extra touch, lobs it into the box, and Timo Werner just gets his head on it and loops it over the despairing hand of the Birmingham goalkeeper. And it's 1-0 to Newcastle, and they're well on their way. But as is so often the case in football, the next goal could be the most important one. So can't rest on our laurels yet. And they're doing a decent job of pressing, forcing me to pass back to the goalkeeper instead of keeping it outfield. Shelby out to Henricks. He's looking for Maximan. He finds Maximan. Ah, no. Couldn't quite manage a trick to get past his man. But you don't mind them losing possession in the final third. Because if one of those tricks comes off, then it can open up a goal-scoring opportunity. Not quite so happy about the passing there. Oh dear, this could be a problem. Great save by the goalkeeper. I have to admit, I'm slightly concerned. Not concerned, what's the word? Uh, confused by the uh, passing choice of the Birmingham player there. They had us completely dead to rights. And instead of finishing us off... Oh dear, Timo Werner's miles offside there. Instead of finishing us off, they, they played the extra pass, which is such a strange decision. But I don't care because it means that I've got away with it. AI not the best after this latest data pack. Werner. Ribery. Still got the ball. Back into Ribery. Crosses it. Good covering work by the midfielder. I think it was Hayden. That's good. Nkunku. Crosses it in. Werner. No, not on target this time. He's not the golden child. He's not going to score with every touch. But we're threatening. Goal kick, Birmingham into the midfield. Hotly contested header. Birmingham end up winners. Newcastle win the second header. Very, very heavy touch there, which played him into trouble. I'm not sure which fans are whistling to complain at the fact that they've had a free kick denied them. I think both teams could probably make a case. Nkunku, Werner. Oh, it's another great save by the Birmingham keeper. Let's just check who that goalkeeper is. True. See, true. No idea. No idea. Going to whip one in hard this time. See if we can get someone's head on it. No, no luck. First time shot. Willems on the left. Crosses it in. Header. And I think that's a very good defensive header rather than a poor attacking one. 
but it ended up coming off of a Newcastle player last, so it is a goal kick. Newcastle players just playing it around the back, just slowing things down, getting an idea for the lay of the land. They know they're in no hurry. Oh, oh, oh my word. I'm not sure how much I knew about that, let alone the players, but Timo Werner playing his way through God knows how much trouble. And then just playing the simple pass to Nkunku, who slots it away with his right foot. Let's watch this again from Werner, though. It's a bit of a defensive mix-up, let's be honest. But the control taking him into the ball was absolutely superb. And what a fantastic time to score right at the end of the first half. 2-0 at half-time to Newcastle United. And they're starting to look like they're winning this at a canter. Awful lot of possession coming Newcastle's way in that first half. Almost three quarters of it, in fact. It'll be interesting to see if we can maintain this in the second half or if we can even improve it. It's really tempting now to just try and take players on with the likes of Alan St. Maximan and just see if we can just manage a jinking run through the defence. Oh, surely it's number three. It is number three. Frank Ribéry with his first goal of the season, I believe. And it was a simple finish, which pretty much any of our strikers probably would have stuck away. But the fact that Ribéry was in that position to begin with is very heartening indeed. And I'm feeling a little bit sorry for the Birmingham goalkeeper who has performed absolute miracles today, but has still found himself picking the ball out of his net three separate occasions so far. I was about to ask how he's managed to keep that in, but in the end, not quite able to. And it's a Newcastle throw. But they do win it back. Ribery just losing the ball. Not particularly strong on it yet. He's good at keeping close control, but he can't hold it up with his back to goal like that particularly well. Werner, the ball's a little bit strong. He plays it out to Henriks, who puts a cross in. And the header just not quite good enough, unfortunately. Oh dear, that was meant to be a shot and I've slide tackled right through the back of the Birmingham defender and I can't have any complaints about that whatsoever really because that is a horrific looking challenge. Honestly, that kind of deserves a red. And given the situation we're in, I think I might actually take the opportunity to take Werner off and we'll give Joel Linton a lovely little stretch out after his heroics of the last match against Manchester. The crowd has one stand to applaud Timo Werner. He's been instrumental in every single goal today, whether it be as the finisher or the creator. And they're giving him a round of applause to see him off the pitch, and he deserves every single clap.
good strong header from Tadebo there. You love to see that. Joel Linton taking a while to get back to his feet, but he is back up. Lob through ball. Nice header. Hello. Oh, it's a shame. It's a real shame. Good target man play there. He knew he wasn't going to be able to make anything of it himself. So instead, he very ungreedily or selflessly, if you want to use a proper word, headed it over to Ribery, who took the shot, but wasn't quite able to shape it around the keeper. Good play from Newcastle here. Hits it. Oh, what an absolute screamer from Isaac Hayden. I'm not sure how much about that he knew, but he knew enough to put his foot through it. And dear Lord, did it fly into the bottom of the net there. Oh, my goodness me. On the half volley, as sweet as a nut. He'll never score a goal better than that one. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> That's a bad touch by Henrix. Awful touch by Henrix, really. So now we're just playing it around. I, we've really given Birmingham a bit of a drubbing. They don't deserve to be beaten by more. Although maybe I will just score one more just for the hell of it. Good cross in by Henricks. Strikers have been a little bit more aware of it. Maybe they would have made the better run. Got onto it. Oh, come on, ref. He's going to let play continue. Oh, this is great. This is great. Oh, it's a shame. It's a shame. Good header by Hayden. Back into the hands of the goalkeeper who's able to just slow things down again. And we're going to look at making another couple of changes. And we will bring on Machia. This left back issue is becoming problematic for us. And who deserves a game that doesn't play very often? Xavi. We do need to bring him on. And he's going to get the captain's armband. Although well, he probably doesn't deserve it yet. He's not exactly... Uh, served his time he's more getting it just because he's replacing the captain oh Maximan surely that's five no it's not that goalkeeper give him a medal give him a medal he's been absolutely superb today despite the scoreline Oh dear, oh dear. Completely missed it. That's a 50-50 clash really. I don't think there's a foul there at all. But Xavi wins the free kick nonetheless. Oh actually, a bit of a late foot in there. Now, should I be cheeky and just go for the, uh, for the, for the knuckle ball? Yeah, why not? Doesn't really come off, but never mind. Birmingham knock it out of play. They're absolutely devoid of confidence at this point. The only player that's actually playing very well at all is the goalkeeper, and that's just because he's been given so many shots to save. Well taken by the goalkeeper again. If he gets anything less than like a 6.5, bearing in mind the fact that he has conceded four goals, if he gets anything less than a 6.5, that will be an absolute travesty of justice. Like, he deserves to be his player's man of the match. Oh, if that had been... So oh, hello! No, no, doesn't happen. Never mind. I'm just going to say, if, if that forward ball was just slightly less powerful... 
I might have been able to roll onto that absolutely perfectly. Oh, so close. We're knocking on the door, but nobody's answering. And there we have it. Final score, 4-0 with four different goal scorers. And it's been an absolutely fantastic display by a goalkeeper who ends up, unfortunately, on the losing side. Absolutely mind-blown by that Hayden goal. I did not know he had that in him at all. Look at those stats. The, the Okay, possession did actually improve for Birmingham in the second half. So fair enough to them on that front. But Gary Monk's men took one hell of a thrashing. Look at the shots. Good Lord Almighty, we put in twice as many passes as Birmingham did. Eesh. Six saves for the goalkeeper there, which is not bad going at all. And he's only got a six. I mean, what have you got to do, really? But there we go. That's a fantastic result for Newcastle. Absolutely superb. Very happy with the way we played today. There was real cohesion. And even for the defenders that came in that aren't first choice yet, they showed a real ability to control things where it got down at their end. Looking at the other results, there's nothing that particularly stands out unless I'm missing something really obvious. No, I would say that all of those results are as they should be. So no massive shocks in the FA Cup first round this year. Next up for us, it's going to be Southampton. That should be an interesting match. Now, we did have a bid come in for one of our players at the end of the last episode, which I didn't show you. I actually dealt with it off camera. Give us two seconds, because it looks as though we're just going to have a little press conference regarding Ribery's performance. Our teamwork definitely won us the game. Come on. that Some of that passing movement was fantastic. You did well, Frank, but I'm not going to give you full credit for us winning that game because you don't deserve that much. So, yes, as I was saying, we had a bid for one of our players. It won't surprise you to know that the bid was for Danny Alves, who is on the transfer list. It was from Tottenham, and it was for £35 million. He's rated at 50, but because of his contract and his release fee clause, he's only... You only need to spend 39 to release him. So they bid 35 for Danny Alves. I said, that's fine. You can have him. But I don't want money. I want Ryan Sessegnon. So it would have been a straight player for player deal. Let's see what they made of that. They don't like that. They don't like that at all, apparently. I really want Ryan Sessegnon. I want a really good attacking left back with bags of stamina. And he is exactly the player that I'm thinking of. If we can get a deal done for Sessegnon at the end of the season, I'll be really, really happy. Uh, let's have a look. I think he's in my listed players. Uh, and if he is, we can have a quick look. No, he's not, actually. That's surprising. Okay. I mean, I do have another couple of players in here that are definitely better value for money, probably. Like uh, Lodi, uh, he's he's a very, very good left back. But that being said, I kind of set my mind on Sessignon at this point. Uh, let's have a quick look at him. Let's go and uh, just find Tottenham. There we go. And we'll have a quick look at Ryan Sessignon. There he is. So, immediately you can see he is rapid as fuck. He can play all down the left-hand side. Uh, his passing and shooting is decent. He's very good dribbler. Defensively, okay, he's probably not the best in the world. But, I can't defend anyway, so it doesn't really matter. My left-backs spend more time up the top end of the pitch than they do at the back. Uh, like Everything about him is absolutely made for the role. The only thing is, he doesn't have pinpoint crossing. 
Now that is something that we could work on, but uh, I don't know. I like him. I like him a lot. There isn't really anyone else in the uh, Tottenham squad that stacks up to him. Handworker. I, I like the name. I like Handworker's name, but that's about all I do like about him. So anyway, that is definitely something that we're going to be looking at going forward, is the possibility of signing Ryan Sessegnon. Let's have a look. Um, so yeah, it basically just says they weren't willing to agree to terms. That's fine. So there we go. Next time when you join me, we're going to be playing Olympic Marseille in France at the Orange Velodrome. And it is probably going to be the toughest game of the European campaigns so far this year. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.